What's up YouTube? My name is Ben Nielsen and I'm a media design educator. Have you ever wondered what the best alternatives are to Adobe Photoshop? Well that's what we are here to talk about today. Okay, so if you tuned in last month, we talked all about Adobe Illustrator and the alternatives to that program, which is a vector illustration program. Now today we're talking about Photoshop, the raster graphics editor program from Adobe, and we're talking about the best alternatives to it in several different categories, just like we did for Illustrator. But first off, I know that some of you just want to cut to the chase and know what's the best Adobe Photoshop alternative out there. Well, my favorite one is Affinity Photo. I absolutely love Affinity Photo. It's cross-platform. It's available for Windows, for Mac, and for iPad. So it's great for people who are switching between platforms all the time. And it's just fantastic. It does almost everything that Adobe Photoshop does, and it does some things that Adobe Photoshop doesn't, and it does some things better, including I always find that it runs a lot faster and that it's more intuitive to use. So Affinity Photo, definitely my number one pick for an alternative to Adobe Photoshop. It's $50 if you're getting it for Mac or PC and just $20 if you're getting it for iPad. And it often goes on sale. I think that $50 is more than a fair price for this fantastic program. The other thing about the Affinity programs is they work together in a suite, so they're the most comparable to Adobe's programs because Adobe Photoshop can work with things like Adobe Illustrator and Adobe InDesign, and Affinity Photo can work with Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. So that makes it the most comparable. But I realize that this might not be for everyone. Some people may not want to pay $50 for a program, or they may just not like the way that Affinity programs run. So we're going to talk about some other alternatives. But first, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Okay, so of course this video is not actually sponsored because nobody would sponsor a YouTube channel with so few subscribers. So this is me reminding you to go ahead and subscribe if you like this content. If you like learning things about design and how to work on iPads and computers, go ahead and hit subscribe. The other thing to remember is that I have courses on all these design topics. So if you like learning about design, and I know you do because you're watching this video, go ahead and click on the links to my courses below. They're over on Skillshare. And if you click through on those links, you'll get a free trial. So you can take any of those courses for free. I've got courses on all kinds of things from photo manipulation to vector illustration, logo design, tons of different things that you can learn just by clicking those links in the description below. It's a great way to keep learning and support this channel. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, so you may not want to pay, so let's talk about some free options. First off, there's GIMP. GIMP is a free and open source image manipulator. So Photoshop is really about manipulating raster images as opposed to vector images, which is really the realm of Adobe Illustrator. GIMP does the same thing. It's for editing raster images. And because it's open source, anyone can download it and anyone can change the code. That also means it comes with a bit more of a learning curve than you might be expecting. So if you aren't really comfortable with open source software, I wouldn't recommend GIMP. But if you feel like you're pretty comfortable around computers, you know how to install things, and you like to get in and tinker, then GIMP is a great option for you. GIMP has been around for over 25 years, so it's a very robust program at this point, but there are a couple of things to consider. First off, it runs on Mac, PC, and Linux, but it hasn't yet been optimized for the M1 Max, and I don't know if and when that will come. So it can run through Rosetta 2, but people are reporting mixed results on that. I haven't tried it out myself. But it is available on Linux, and this is really the only program in this list that is going to be available on Linux. So if you are a Linux user, I think GIMP is probably right for you. If that sounds a little bit too complicated for you, well, I've got another option, and that's the web-based application Photopea. Photopea is basically exactly like Photoshop. It's laid out like Photoshop, it looks exactly like Photoshop, and it does most of the same things Photoshop does. In fact, it is very impressive how many things Photopea can do for running in a web browser. Of course, it won't be able to do everything Photoshop can do, but how much it can do is crazy. You can do probably 85% of the things that you might do in Adobe Photoshop in Photopea, and you can do it all on the web browser. And it's totally free, it's ad supported, so you will see ads along the side, but you can create all of your images for free. I think it's important to point out at this point that Photoshop is not meant for editing batch photos. And so we're not talking about that today. Lightroom is the Adobe program that's really meant for editing batch photos. And if you'd like to see a video about the best alternatives to Lightroom, go ahead, drop in the comments and let me know that as well. And I will make a video about what I think the best alternatives to Lightroom are. So you can't expect Photopea to be able to edit all of the photos from your vacation all at once. That's not what it's intended to do. It's really intended to go in to one image 
and really work on the composition, maybe combine multiple images together or really get into the details of that image. If you are on a Chromebook, Photo P is probably the best option for you because it's just going to run in the web browser. So I really recommend that for anybody on a Chromebook or anybody who's just getting started out, they don't want to invest any money yet, but they want to see if this image manipulation thing is something that they want to get into. Next, let's talk about the iPad. Of course, on the iPad, there is a version of Photoshop, but it is absolutely horrendous. So let's not even talk about that. Okay, so on the iPad, Affinity Photo is again going to be my favorite option. Again, it's just $20. It's really got all of the best features of Photoshop right there, fully functional on the iPad right away. It's the best thing that you can get on the iPad. Unless, of course, you're one of those people who primarily uses Photoshop for drawing. If you primarily use Photoshop for drawing, then the best option on iPad for you is going to be Procreate. Procreate has taken the drawing world by storm. It's only $10 and it's absolutely fantastic. In fact, if you start using Procreate on the iPad, you will probably wonder why you ever used Photoshop to draw with to begin with because it is so much better. It's the best drawing app I've ever found. Unfortunately, it is only available for iPads, so you do need an iPad in order to be able to take advantage of that. But if you want to do more traditional things in Photoshop as far as photo manipulation goes, then I still think Affinity Photo is the right one for you. And I do have a recent course introducing photo composition in Affinity Photo that I'll link to in the description description below. And that's really going to wrap up this video for us. Again, I just want to say Affinity Photo is my top choice, but these other choices are great choices as well if you're trying to replace Adobe Photoshop. I did want to give a couple of honorable mentions to programs that I haven't used myself, but are good alternatives, especially in the drawing space. So if you're really into using Photoshop for drawing, there's Krita, which is another open source program, so free, but again, a little bit of a learning curve. And there's Clip Studio Paint, which is a single purchase license. There's two versions of it. One that I think is about $50, and one that's a little bit more expensive, maybe around like $150. So that's Clip Studio Paint. Those are much more focused on drawing than they are image manipulation. So I'm just going to give them honorable mentions in this video. But unlike Adobe Illustrator, there are actually tons of different programs that are Adobe Photoshop alternatives. Because Photoshop's more popular, more people have put their time into making alternatives. So now I want to hear from you. Go ahead, drop in the comments, and let me know what your favorite alternative to Adobe Photoshop is. Let me know if there's something that I haven't heard of that is really working out great for you, or if you're using one of these apps I've mentioned, and how you like it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.